All right, got a letter in the mail a little while ago. I'm going to take a few minutes to answer it. The question is about the interracial marriage uh, study and, and uh, some of the stands that I take against that system of interracial marriage and why I take those stands. And uh, So let me read the letter here. It says, Hello, Brian. I hope you and your family are doing well and you are having a great start to this new year. Yes, we are doing well, and yes, we have, are having a great start to the year. Thank you for asking. My question for you is based on your teaching about interracial marriage. In the past, I have made a comment, comment or two on your videos about this that were not, excuse me, were more criticizing than they were an actual comment or question. For that, I would like to apologize and attempt again to address my concern, but in a much more open way. After all, I am not perfect and can be wrong but I will never know unless I open myself to an explanation. Well, I appreciate that. I wish more people would handle me that way, you know, and be a little bit more open with things. In the book of Ruth, we read about how she marries Boaz. Ruth is from Moab, as the chapter and verse here. Um, Boaz is an Israelite. Was their marriage in sin? What can be said about their child, Obed, who begat Jesse, who then begat David? And ultimately, what can be said about Christ, the unblemished lamb, who by blood is a mixed person? Uh, that's not true. Uh, Jesus' blood did not come from Mary or Joseph. We'll talk more about that. Uh, I'm going to answer these in more detail. But uh, thank you for taking the time from your busy schedule to read this letter. I hope from my questions you can see where my concern is coming from. Sorry for the bad handwriting. I collect fountain pens and enjoy writing in cursive with them, even though I'm not the best at it. Thank you again in Christ, the name. And I think that your handwriting is very good, actually. Uh, so, actually, let me keep that letter open. Turn your Bible to the book of Ruth. We're going to look about this thing because it's, it's a legitimate question. If interracial marriage is wrong and it's, it's a bad thing in the Old Testament, and it is, um, then what's the deal here with Ruth marrying Boaz? It's a good question. And, you know, let's be fair and open about this. Let's not be prejudiced and, and try to say, well, uh, yeah, we got you here, Brian, or whatever else. Just let's look at what the Scriptures have to say. The book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Why didn't he stay there? Why didn't he stay in Israel? Couldn't he trust the Lord to take care of the famine? Other people did. They stayed. They didn't leave. Hmm. Verse 2, And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the name of his two sons Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. Okay? He dies leaves Israel and goes to a place where he's not supposed to go to because he can't trust the Lord. I mean, why did he leave? You see? I mean, you know, other Jews, all the Jews didn't leave Israel when the famine hit. Why did he leave? See? I would say it's because he wasn't trusting the Lord for, you know, providing for him. But he leaves and he dies. And then what happens? Verse 4, And they took them wives of the women of Moab. Why'd they wait till their dad died to do that? The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died, also both of them, and the, women, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Now, I find it ironic that you can look at this book and you can say, well, there's nothing wrong with interracial marriage, but it starts off showing that there was an interracial marriage and those that were involved died. Those Jews that were involved, God killed them. You say, well, now, you know, who has the power of life and death? They didn't die of natural causes of old age or something like this. They died. So now... In a court case, if this was taken to a court case, and let's, let's remove all emotional attachments to this and everything else, Lawyer A says, um, you know, 
they, these two men, uh, or, or that Ruth, we'll say it this way, Ruth and Boaz, they, they inter were interracially married, and so that proves that God's okay with it. I come along as the prosecuting attorney, we'll say, and I say, uh, well, if you want to talk about interracial marriage, you need to look at the totality of the Old Testament scriptures, and even in this passage, even in this book of Ruth, God kills, the, first of all, it's a, it's, it's a sin that they leave Israel. They didn't trust the Lord to take care of them in the years of famine. They leave, and so God says, boom, to the man, kills him, and then the two sons marry wives, you know, from Moab. They marry wives, and God kills them. So see, just plain just looking at the thing, you can say, well, you know, I don't think God was too pleased with them leaving Israel and going and marrying you know, women from Moab. And of course, you know, Ruth, you know, she comes back and she marries Boaz. And yes, that is in the line of, you know, um, I guess it's Mary's line, I think. You know, let's go to Matthew chapter 1. I didn't prepare any kind of notes for this, so I'm just kind of, you know, thinking here. Matthew chapter 1. Uh, let's see down through here. Yeah. It's, it's spelled, um, differently here in the New Testament because you're coming from Greek to English, Old Testament's Hebrew to English. But if you look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, and Salmon begat Bo, Boaz, there it'd be Boaz, um, of Rahab and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth and Obed begat Jesse. So right there they're mentioned right in the genealogy of what you know the the ancestry of Jesus Christ of the Lord Jesus Christ. But here's the important part. Another part here in the letter he said uh, here ultimately what can be said about Christ the unblemished lamb who by blood is a mixed person. Not by blood. Nope. Um, I'll show you that. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. The blood of Jesus Christ was God's blood. Okay? So, he didn't have man's blood. Man's blood is corrupted. So to say, well, Jesus was in that line coming down through, so he was of mixed blood. No, he was not. No, he was not. And you say, but okay, but there's mixed marriages in that genealogy that's given there of, you know, the parents that, that uh, well, the mother, I should say, you know, of, you know, Jesus that he was born to. Uh, it was God's blood there. Um, it was God's seed there, you know, um, as far as, uh, you know, it's not corrupted, you know, with, uh, with, you know, just man, mortal man, and things like that. It was, there was no mortal man that was the father of Jesus. It was God. Okay, so that's there. But why? Why is there interracial, you know, marriage there? What's the deal? Well, here's where you get into a really, really big study, and I probably should at some point in time, and that is the thing of typology in the Old Testament coming into the New Testament. You'll see this thing. And what a lot of people do is they'll go back into the Old Testament where the Lord is working and showing things, trying to show what's coming. It's, it's kind of a, in, when you see typology, there's a type of somebody that's going to show up later. I'll give you a good example. Um, Abraham, take thy son Isaac and go up there and sacrifice him. Thine only son. Abraham is the father of Isaac and he's supposed to go sacrifice him. God the Father, Jesus Christ, sacrifices him. And he gets up there, and God says to Abraham, he says, you know, don't kill him, basically there. And he says, God himself shall provide a lamb for the sacrifice. All right? It's a type. And so people, you know, you read in the New Testament where it says about Abraham being justified by faith. And they say, see, Abraham had the same faith that we do today. Abraham was justified by faith. We have faith today. We're saved by grace through faith. So Abraham believed in Jesus Christ. We believe in Jesus Christ. 
No, 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 no. Abraham's faith is given as a type. It's one of the Old Testament types that is pointing people towards the New Testament. All right. What is Ruth and Boaz? What's that all about? Well, it's in type showing it's not going to be just salvation to the Jews. There's going to come a point in time when God is going to be dealing with Gentiles as well. Jews and Gentiles in one body. Let me show you. Galatians chapter 3. If you don't know this scripture, Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay? That's here today for Christians. Back in the Old Testament, it wasn't there. God's dealing with the nation of Israel. But he's giving typology where he's saying, okay, look at this. This is a type of what's eventually going to happen. All right? Another good one is the, the book of Song of Solomon. It's a black woman and a you know, Jewish king, basically Solomon. And they're talking about their love for one another and things like this. And people say, well, then interracial marriage is fine. No, 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 no. And I'm going to show you why here in just a minute. Interracial marriage is not fine in the Old Testament. It is very much looked down upon. It is called a great evil. All right? But the Lord is saying, okay, I'm, you know, this thing happened, and I'm showing you in type, eventually Jesus Christ is going to be married to a Gentile bride. Both Jews and Gentiles. I'll say it that way, not solely Gentile. It's, it's typology that's pointing towards the future. And you don't look for those types and things like that and say, well, then we can overthrow other scriptures. And again, it's very clear that God killed, you know, or at least allowed them to die young, you know, which I don't believe God just, you know, doesn't know who's dying or when, and, you know, it's just a surprise to him. I think he has that stuff planned out. And, you know, Elimelech, Elimelech and his two sons flee, you know, Israel. They leave Israel because they don't, don't trust the Lord to provide for them. And they go down and they take, you know, Elimelech, you know, dies, for doing the thing, and then the two sons take strange wives to them. Let me show you that in the Old Testament, the prohibition against what they did. Okay, so you can you can talk about well, you know, as long as you love each other, I see this type of stuff. You know, as long as you love each other, uh, no. Nehemiah chapter thirteen, verse one. On that day, they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people, and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. Um, well, then was it right? What was done with Elimelech's uh, two sons marrying these Moabite women? No, it wasn't right. It was a sin. Okay, and again... The Lord shows types there. The Lord shows, hey, there's going to come a time when it's imputed righteousness and everything else. And, okay, Boaz and Ruth, was there sin there? I believe that there was. I mean, how do you, how do you reconcile this stuff? Well, Boaz and, and, and Ruth, you know, they, because of what they did, that's, that's fine and blessed of God. And, but we can just ignore the other parts of the Old Testament. It says don't go down to the Moabites and get a wife from there. How does that work? You know, Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23. In those days also saw, saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab, and their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them, and cursed them, and smote certain of them, and plucked off their hair, and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there so no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even, did, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil? Interracial marriage called great evil? Yeah. To transgress against our God and marrying strange wives. And one of the sons of Joiada, jo, the son of Eli, Eliashib, the high priest, was son-in-law to Sanballat, the Horonite. Therefore I chased him from me. Remember them, O my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. 
See, my job as a preacher is I have to preach the whole counsel of God. I can't cherry pick certain things out and say, okay, well, Ruth and, and Boaz, they got married and that went down and, and produced David. Um, and so therefore interracial marriage is okay. And this other scriptures here in the Old Testament that condemns it and calls it a great evil. Um, well, I'll just kind of ignore that. I'll just say it's progressive revelation or something like this. No, it isn't. All right. Why is it written about in the scriptures? Well, again, one of the the central theme of scripture, if you want to really get down to it, is the failure of man and the perfection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible is very, very rough on man. I mean, there is none good. There is none, you know, that seeketh after God. They're all gone out of the way. They're all become filthy. That's what God writes about you, about you, about me. The Bible is very rough on man, and the Bible does not cover up sin. The Bible explains about sin. But the Bible also talks about forgiveness of sin. Now, if you look at the Bible and there's something in the Old Testament that's done, and it's over and over and over again, don't do it, don't do it, this is bad, this is wrong, this is a sin, and you see somebody does it, and God has mercy on them, that doesn't mean that God has gotten rid of the other parts of His Word. Okay? You don't do that. You don't go and say, well, I found an exception to the rule. I found this little loophole here. This person did it and got away with it. And therefore, just forget all the other scriptures. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. And yet that's exactly what people do. See, man in his wickedness comes along to the Bible and says, the Bible condemns my sins. So what I need to do is I need to find somebody that disobeyed this certain commandment that's against me and then I can say oh see right there loophole I don't have to follow it kind of like what a lot of you people do to me oh well look at you Brian you're this and you're that you're a sinner too you know how can you preach against our sins when you yourself are a sinner huh uh, that's what I'm supposed to do all right yes we're all sinners yes we all mess up yes you know whatever but the whole point is what kind of a preacher would I be if I didn't preach against sin? And interracial marriage is a sin. It is a great evil. We just read it here in Nehemiah 13. And you show me in the New Testament when it's undone. You had unclean animals and th things that you're not supposed to eat in the Old Testament. It's undone in the book of Acts. The Lord says, shows that to Peter. And then in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, I think it is, um, where it talks about the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats. That talks about every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. It's been undone, you see. There are no clean and unclean meats today for you as a Christian. It's not there. Now, if you're Jewish... You know, if you're a saved Jew, well, then I'd still stick by some of the, the culture and traditions and things of your people. But for goodness sake, don't integrate. You have integration, it destroys a country. It's what destroys a nation. Oh, but America is such a strong nation, right? America is not a strong nation. America is falling. And it's interesting, too, because uh, there's still a lot of segregation in America. People still have enough sense. You're, you're never going to fully integrate the whole world. It's never going to happen. Never going to happen. So, um, you know, I, I just, there's, there's some of these politically correct things out there, you know. Um, you start to say that, that uh, women are weaker than men, and that gets people riled up and stuff. They get all angry. You start to say, well, the Bible is, promotes slavery. People get all angry about that. They don't actually look at the scriptures and see what the Bible does say about slavery and rules and things that are there for how you're supposed to take care of slaves, bond servants, you know. Um, they don't look at that stuff. Satan, through the politically correct movement, has turned people against the Word of God. Through the feminists, through the integration movement, through a lot of this stuff. But when you just read the Bible and you accept the Bible and you love the Word of God, you say, you know what, it's crystal clear on this subject. So... I hope I answered your question. Uh, Jesus was not of mixed blood. Uh, the story of Ruth 
is a story that is pointing people towards what would happen one day. That uh, the body of Christ is its not Jew, it's not Gentile. We're all one in Christ Jesus. But that doesn't mean that there's not supposed to be separation down here on the earth. So, because you know, neither male nor female. What, are you going to practice no separation between men and women? That's what the perverts are trying to do right now. Anybody should be allowed to use whatever bathroom they want. It's insanity. Preserve your culture. Preserve diversity. Okay? Diversity is not coming together and getting rid of things that are different. Okay? That's the exact opposite of diversity. All right? Diversity is, I'm thankful for who God made me to be. I want to be, I'm a German. Okay? My ancestors are, are from Bavaria. All right? I'm going to learn that, about that culture, and that's what I'm going to do. My wife is German. I'm not going to try to act like a black man, and I'm not going to have, encourage some black man to act like he's German. They're not. So, that is going to be it. I hope I've answered your, your question. Um, please be open-minded to these things. Thank you for watching.